Well, Hollis Shimmer was designed for sounds that are big and get bigger. It creates a cinematic orchestral sound out of pretty much whatever you put into it. It's a massive reverb that can also generate pitch shifted signals in there to make massive sounds even more massive. The idea behind Valhalla Shimmer was, I don't know if it's obvious, I'm a huge Brian Eno aficionado. And I love these sounds that he would get during the 80s. This is some stuff he would do for soundtracks, for like Dune or for the Apollo documentary, stuff he was doing with U2. He would create these configurations of hardware in a studio and create these feedback paths in such a way they would create this really giant sound. He would take a Lexicon 224 reverb, run it through an AMS pitch shifting delay, run that through a Lexicon delay, and there's feedback around that whole thing on the mixing console. Ignoring even the mixing console, that was $25,000 worth of gear to get that one sound. Back in 2010, working on the first commercial product, I discovered those sounds kind of accidentally by routing pitch shifting and reverbs together. The idea is like, how do you create something like that that sounds like this, this process that you do with all this hardware, but that would also be improved in some ways over that? Because feedback around those systems can be very unstable and weird. I want to create something that is just a stable way of doing that and something that to quote Billy D. Williams, works every time. And so Valhalla Shimmer is a result of that. And it was the first commercial plugin released by Valhalla back in October 2010. And it continues to be popular. Let us do an overview of Valhalla Shimmer. So we have our mix control uh, to be able to blend from our dry signal to our wet. No mix lock on this one. No mix lock. But the mix is not saved with the preset. So when you flip through presets, it doesn't change the mix. This is our pitch shift, which can go from negative 12 steps to plus 12. Semitones. Semitones. Minus 12 is an octave below. Plus 12 is an octave above. Zero is nothing. Well, let's hear it at minus 12. Kick it. As you can hear, the pitch as it decays keeps going, getting lower and lower. And it's not cycling down, it just sort of transitions into that lower and lower state in a very graceful way. Let's hear it at zero. That's whatever sound you put in, just comes out without any pitch shifting, but orchestral. Twelve. And you can hear how it just keeps going higher and higher in pitch. Plus 12 semitones is kind of the classic sound that people have called shimmer in the past. So that's where the name came from. Now you can set it to all sorts of things. Like try setting it to plus seven. Let me bring the mod depth down a little bit. It's kind of instant planetarium music. While we're talking about the pitch shift, we should also talk about the pitch mode. Yes. As these are going together. Right now we have the pitch mode at single, which means it's like you only get one pitch shift in one direction. Dual, if you've got it set at whatever value is going to give you a shift up by that a number of semitones and then down by that number of semitones. So dual in that same setting. Even more planetarium-ish. Scary planetarium. Welcome home planetarium. So let me go 
got the reverse, reverse which the pitch shifter is re reversing. That's going to be a really subtle thing in the context of this. It's going to be hard to hear, but it does give you different kind of build of what we call the side bands over time. The side bands are basically kind of the noisy parts of it that aren't the original signal. It's an artifact, but the artifacts give you a lot of interest. So it gives you different artifacts. In that sense, it's almost smoother artifacts, isn't it? Now let's hear the dual one. Dual reverse. And then you have the ability to turn the pitch shift off. And this is useful in conjunction with the feedback control. Because this allows you to get near infinite reverbs that don't change in pitch by just turning the feedback up to, let's turn up to one. Which is a nice segue into our feedback control. Feedback routes feedback around the entire network. Now, something that's interesting about this, turn the feedback on this one to zero. So that's with the feedback of zero. It's not short. This is a very big reverb. And part of that, because this is a diffusion-based reverb. We are in big stereo mode. Yep, big stereo is the best one. Mono sounds good too. Can we put in mono? Mm -hmm. And that amount of just wash is controlled by the diffusion setting. Like try setting diffusion at zero. Now it sounds like it sounds like in a weird delay. <laughs> Turn up the feedback of that one. But turn the diffusion up to uh, 25, or 0.25. That starts building up. Can you turn the feedback to zero again? Mm -hmm. Put it to uh, 0 0.618. 0 0.618 is kind of a magic value. It's called uh, phi, or some people say phi, but the golden ratio. And why that's magic is that if you play something, it's going to take just as long for the sound to fade in as to fade out. So next up, let's look at the size control. Let's turn diffusion off for that so we can get an idea of what it sounds like in its raw state. So let's turn the size all the way to zero. It's a very short echo. Put it up 50%. And then 100%. And now put diffusion at 80%, or explain low cut and high cut? Oh, I can. These are very simple high pass, low pass filters. Uh, they're in the feedback path. They're in the feedback path. Turn up the high cut. That's going to be easier to hear. Turn it down. That's way down. Yep. Low cut works in a similar way. It's a good way of getting kind of some of the oomph, like too much of the woofiness out of the sound. And then we have our modulators, uh, right in depth. When we talked in other reavers about having some of the delay lines 
modulated by like having their lengths slowly change in order to create chorus. The Hall of Shimmer, every delay line is being changed slowly and randomly. The way that they're configured, this gives you this really huge sound. Like let's turn the mod depth off to zero and let's just hear what it sounds like. I may have the size at 50%. It's a cool sound, but it's like, it's static. Not particularly metallic, surprisingly enough. Now you turn up the mod depth. That one little synthesizer sound turns into like more of an orchestra. Can you turn the feedback up a little bit? Mm -hmm. well, another thing down below the mod depth, there's the color mode. Now that was with the dark. This affects like how the decay frequencies decay over time. Let's keep it on dark. And like you've got like turn up the toner up your high cut the whole way. So it's like we got none of that in place. In the dark it's like over time the frequencies will naturally decay, get kind of darker. It's subtle, but it's there. In bright, they don't decay. It's bright, bright, bright. Yeah, as I said, it's bright, bright, bright. <laughs> and that, like, I prefer dark. I prefer dark too. Dark does have a little bit more vintage. Now there is the reverb mode, and that's like goes between different sizes so like we're right now in the mono which means it's a mono input and it goes to stereo now let's go to the big stereo it's a different sound overall same sort of like lengths the medium stereo uses much less delay so it's kind of a more closed in sound and then the small stereo is really small. It's for if you want something like that. It's more for weird special effects. For reverb, I almost always use the big stereo, the mono, and the uh, medium stereo one. Valhalla Shimmer is your key to getting instant ambient. It's ambient in a box. It's cinematic soundscapes made from any sound. If you want orchestral sounds, if you want soundtrack sounds, if you want giant ambient sounds, the Hollis Shimmer is the plug-in to get.